Hi, Lauren here again for part three of your new parent return and reunion brief. In this section, we're going to talk about how bringing a baby changes your family dynamic and what are some things to expect to change into your family by bringing a new baby into your world. Now, whether it's your first baby or fifth baby, the dynamic is going to change once you add that new little one into the mix. I want you to stop and I want you to think for a few seconds. I want you to think about how has your life changed already? How has your partner's life changed already back at home? What are some of those changes that come to mind? How about the daily schedule? What is that going to look like? Are you going to be able to come and go as you please? Are you going to be able to spend as much time with your partner as you once did? Are you going to get enough sleep? These are all changes and things you have to think about. And we're going to talk about how you can adapt to these changes and celebrate these changes in your life now that you have the new little one. So the first change, your schedule. Your baby's needs and their schedule is going to affect everything that you do in your day-to-day -day life. Your world, like I said earlier, is going to revolve around your baby's schedule. How you go and come to places. You gotta pack, you need to prepare, you need to make sure you have everything. Are you going to go on a food shopping trip in the middle of nap time? Is that a good idea? Shall we wait? It's all gonna revolve around that. Now, this can help you become more of an organized person or even a better planner because you're going to have to plan everything you do around that baby's schedule to make things run smoothly. Another little change that might come into your household is there may be more chores. You may be expected to do a little bit more now with a new little one in the households. That baby is going to bring in more laundry. That baby is going to bring in more bath times. That baby is going to bring in more cooking. And you're definitely, if you're using bottles, going to have to be spending more time um, cleaning some bottles. So make sure you work with your partner and that you work together and come up with a plan. This can help strengthen your relationship and you know bond together during this time of creating the stuff for your kid that needs to get done. Now, parenting, a lot of people say changes relationships. Some say it has puts a strain on their relationship where others think that, you know, it can make our relationship stronger. We want to lean towards making our relationship stronger. How does bringing a baby into the world make your relationship with your partner stronger? Now, communication is going to be the big player here. It's going to play a major role in your lives once you have a child. You need to be able to both understand each other's needs and expectations, you and your partner. You need to be open and honest with each other and during your daily conversations. You need to talk about any changes that are going on in your lives and set goals together for your new family dynamic. You're going to have to talk about maybe parenting expectations and what parents you want to be towards your child. Make sure you're on the same page with each other. Talk about your hopes and dreams for your baby and what you hope for them as they grow older. This can create a stronger relationship for you and your partner by talking and being open and honest with each other. Now, let's talk about sleep. Um, being a parent is a 24 hour job, seven days a week, every single day of the year never stops. There is no doubt you are going to lose sleep over the next 18 plus years of your life. My advice to you is that when that baby is napping, especially in those early stages, you and your partner try to nap as well. I know you're probably saying easier said than done. There are dishes that have to be cleaned, laundry that has to be washed, and you may even have to take a shower, but I promise you, that baby is not going to remember the dishes in the sink or the laundry that is not folded. That baby is going to remember if you are happy, if you are attentive, that will help them better connect to you. 
you need to make sure that, sure that you and your partner are recharged and ready to go just like that little one is when they take their naps, okay? Last but not least, let's talk about the baby crying. Now, I connect this to the smoke detector going off in the middle of the night when the battery is low, a baby crying can be as annoying like that, right? You know, you're deep in sleep, that smoke detector goes off and the battery is just dinging all night long. Take the battery out, it just keeps on going. That baby's cry, to me, that's what it feels like. That's what I equate it to. Babies are going to cry and they're going to cry. You're going to get frustrated. You're going to get annoyed and that's okay. Babies cry because that's how they communicate. You need to find a way to deal with that and cope with it for yourself. No matter how tired or how frustrated you are, you need to make sure that you never shake a baby because shaken baby syndrome, syndrome often occurs with parents that are tired and frustrated with their baby that just won't stop crying. And shaken baby syndrome happens because a, an adult takes the baby and holds them and just shakes them in a motion that causes a whiplash. Remember, babies have very weak neck muscles and back muscles, and if they're shaken to a certain degree, that that is going to cause some sort of fatal brain injury or um, cause some kind of long disability in the child. So if you feel like you are being getting yourself worked up due to the crying baby, maybe first take a step back, make sure the baby's in a safe, secure spot, let the baby cry for a few minutes, take a few deep breaths, walk away, and then come back and try to soothe the baby again. Now, if that doesn't work, I'm going to give you some more tips to help maybe calm a crying baby. Now, Dr. Harvey Karp has a method called the five S's. And this method helps soothe a crying baby. And it's five S's. They all start with the letter S. The first one is to swaddle a baby. Now to swaddle a baby is when you take the baby and you wrap them up in this blanket, kind of like a taco. The tight swaddle of a baby provides that continuous touch and support and makes it feel like the baby is back in that womb again. Being in the womb is protective to that child because that's where they were for nine months of their life. Now, if you need more tips or tricks for swaddling, check out some YouTube videos. I'm sure there are plenty out there of how to properly swaddle your baby, as well as maybe even ask the doctor or the pediatrician for some tips of how to swaddle the baby. Now, once you swaddle a baby, if that doesn't work, or if they're too big and they don't like to swaddle, you can try this, the next S, which is the shushing sound. Babies are used to that loud noise from being in the womb. So loud noises, they're used to like the blood flowing around them. It sounds like the vacuum cleaner. Um, so if we make a loud shushing sound, like shh, 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 while we're trying to soothe the baby, that can help calm that baby down because once again, it reminds them of being inside the womb. The third S is swinging gently. Um, when the baby was in a womb, it moved around a lot. It is hard for babies to come out of the womb and then be sedentary, sit still. They're not used to that. They're used to moving around. They're calm. So I suggest taking the baby, holding the baby here, or even in your arms, and just gently swaying that baby, getting them to calm down. I know my son, that worked a lot for him as well. The number four S is sucking. Sucking triggers a calming reflex and releases some natural chemicals to the brain for the baby. So this can be accomplished either by sucking on a pacifier, sucking on their finger, sucking on a binky, or even a bottle. So if you just pop in the binky, some babies don't like binkies, some prefer fingers, 
just sucking on that for a few minutes, giving that sucking um, ability will help trigger those chemicals and calm down the baby. Another S you can try is putting the baby on their side or stomach. Um, when you're holding the baby, you can place the baby on their side or on their stomach and you can connect in with the swaying as well. This can help with their digestion if they're feeling a little gassy. Um, if the baby does fall asleep in this position, you want to make sure that you transfer the baby back to their back because for sleeping positions, babies should be sleeping on their backs until they're able to roll on their own. So those are some ways that you can help calm the baby. If you need any more information about calming a baby, please feel free to reach out to us here at Fleet and Family Support Center so we can get you some resources to help you on that topic. Thanks for joining me for part three. I'll see you with part four soon. Bye.